Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm going to show you how to do is, is how to solve absolute value uh, inequalities. Now, in my previous video, I showed you how to do solving absolute value inequalities. And when we did that, you know, we, set, we used two cases to get rid of the absolute value, just like we do with absolute value equations. However, when we created our two cases, we were dealing with inequalities that were less than or equal to. Now I'm dealing with ones that are greater than or greater than or equal to. And the difference is when you create your two cases and you create your compound inequality, for less than or less than or equal to, you had the uh, inequality with the conjunction and. Now we're going to be using the conjunction is going to be or. And you can see when you kind of go back up and take your solutions and plug them up, you can see why or would make sense rather than and. However, uh, the main important thing though is to make sure that we can uh, separate them um, correctly. So remember, when you have a compound, anytime you have an absolute value equation or inequality, to get rid of the absolute value, we have to create our two cases. So I'm going to do p is greater than 3, and then or p is going to be less than negative 3. Because remember, when we negate the other side with inequalities, we've got to make sure we flip the sign. So then let's go ahead and graph. And now we're going to go ahead and graph on you know, a number line. And we don't need to do 3 like I did for compound. Uh, I can just use 1. So I'll do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 4. OK, so here I have p is greater than negative, p is greater than 3. So I go ahead and make a point at 3. It's greater than, not greater than or equal to. So that means it's going to be, um, it's going to be values that are going, getting larger. So I'm actually going to do an arrow off of the inequality, uh, off the number line. And then here, p is less than negative 3. So again, I do another open point and then going to the left. Now, you can go ahead and see if you picked any one of these random, if you pick negative 4 or 4, which would be both part of our solutions of the or, comp or inequality, then you could see that those both are going to provide a solution that works. So the difference is when it's greater than or greater than or equal to, it's always going to produce a conjunction of or compared to and. Because if you were to rewrite this as and, let's pick 0, for instance. Here, 0 would be a part of the and inequality. Well, if you plug 0 in for p, absolute value of 0 is 0. 0 is not greater than 3. So that's why the or is going to work. So basically, if you just remember, less than, less than, or equal to gives you the and compound inequality. Greater than or greater than or equal to gives you the or inequality. OK, so now in this next example, uh, we're going to basically do, again, the exact same thing. We're going to create our two cases. Oh, and the other thing, too. Remember, when you're creating your two cases, you've got to make sure your absolute value is isolated. right? And here it's isolated, so I created my two cases. Here it's isolated, create my two cases. Here it's not isolated, so we're going to work on that um, before we create our two cases. So anyways, this one is isolated. I have absolute value of 5x plus 1 is greater than 14. So I'm going to go ahead and create my two cases. So creating my two cases, I get 5x plus 1 is greater than 14 with my conjunction or. 5x plus 1 is now going to be less than negative 14. Right? Negate, flip sign. All right, so now let's go ahead and use our inverse operation. So I'll subtract 1 on both sides. I have 5x is now um, greater than 13. And then divide by 5, divide by 5. x is going to be greater than 13 fifths. That's just OK. Um, here I'm going to add 1, add 1. Why am I adding one? I'm subtracting one. I was like, what? That's kind of weird. Subtract one, subtract one. So I get 5x. 5x is now going to be less than negative 15. Divide by 5, divide by 5. x is now less than negative 3. Or. OK? So the best thing to do is, we, the hard thing is, we got to be able to determine, well, x is greater than. Um, you know, 13 over 5. Well, what, where exactly is that on the number line, right? Because if we're going to create a number line, um, that value is not, you know, a lot of times we create our number lines, you know, using integers. Well, 13 over 5 is not an integer. So the best thing to do would be to either use a calculator is to rewrite it. Um, use a calculator to rewrite it in decimal form or rewrite it as a mixed number. And if you're going to rewrite this as a mixed number, 5 goes into 13 two times. Uh, with a remainder of 3. So we know 3 fifths is less than 1, so it's basically 2 and 3 fifths. Um, so now I know my, my higher, um, or I know I have to include 2 and negative 3, so I'm actually going to put 0 here, 
I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. OK, so uh, the first one, x is greater than 2 and 3 fifths. Now again, remember, it's not an integer, so it's going to be between 2 and 3. Right? The 3 fifths is not actually 1, so it's not going to go to 3, but it's larger than 2. So I'm just going to kind of estimate my point here. Again, that's greater than, so it's going to be an open circle. And all the values that are greater than 2 and 3 fifths are going to be to the right. Now this one I'm going to shade on the number line. Just make sure you include that arrow. Here, x is less than negative 3, so again I go to an open point. And then all the values that are less than negative 3 are going to go to the left. OK, so the big main mistake that students get with this next problem is that they do not isolate the absolute value before they start solving. And you know, as I mentioned, that's the biggest mistake that students make. You can only solve your absolute value by using your two cases when the absolute value is isolated. Here I have this absolute value of 2 fifths y minus 8. And then that's being added by 4 is greater than or equal to 12. So the first thing I have to do is subtract a 4 on both sides. By subtracting a 4 on both sides, I now have 2 fifths y minus 8 is greater than or equal to 8. Now I have an absolute value is greater or equal to 8. So now I can create my two cases. So when I create my two cases here, I have 2 fifths y minus 8 is greater than or equal to 8. Or 2 fifths y minus 8 is less than or equal to negative 8. Right? Negate, flip the sign. OK, so now let's go ahead and solve. So the first one, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Right? We always undo addition and subtraction first. So I have 2 fifths y is now greater than or equal to 16. Then if I have a, a fraction multiplied by my variable to undo multiply my fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 5 over 2. Then I can just rewrite that as 1. So therefore, um, you could do this a couple different ways. You could do 5 times 16, which would be 80, divided by 2, which would be 40. Or you could say 16 divides into 2 uh, 8 times. 8 times 5 is 40. So I end up having the inequality y is greater than or equal to 40. Or now I go ahead and do my same inversions. I add 8, add 8, 2 fifths y is less than or equal to 0, multiply by the reciprocal. And then what I end up with is y is less than or equal to 0. So in this case, this, prevents us with, this presents us with a good opportunity to change our scaling. We don't always have to have the scaling. That's, I think, what I, that's what I was trying to say, scaling. We don't always have to go by 1s. All right? We can go by whatever values we want to. So if I'm going to create my number line and I've got to include 40, I'm not going to start with 0 in the middle and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? It's going to take too much time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, 0 be right here. And I'm going to go by 5s. So negative 5, 5, 10, 15. That's going to be too long. Let's go by and 15, 20, 25. 30, 35, 40, 45. All right, that works. So then, if I've got to show y is less than or equal to 0, I'm going to do a nice big point here. Since that's less than or equal to, which is different than my other two problems, that's going to be solid. All the values that are less than 0 are going to go to the left. Then I have y is greater than or equal to 40. So I go to 40, again, close point. That's going to be all the values to the right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve an absolute value inequality when get, by using the comp, compound inequality with conjunction or. Thanks. Hello.